Hey guys, you're listening to the Town of Football Podcast, and this is our analysis of the NFC West prior to the 2018 NFL season. Hello, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. Hello! Whoop, whoop, whoop. Uh, first person to message me on Instagram and let me know where that's from. That hello, whoop, whoop, whoop. Where that reference is from, you'll get a free Town of Football t shirt. Yeah, just message me if you get it correct. Town of Football t shirt. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Town of Football podcast. My name is Hassan Khan. I am the host of this fabulous show. So we've been talking about all the divisions of football. We're wrapping up the NFC today, talking about the NFC West. You guys have been awesome with tuning in about, um, or for this entire series where we talk about all the divisions in football. So um, this is actually one of the more watched uh, podcasts if you're into the video podcast on YouTube. Um, one of the more watched podcast series that we've come out with and also uh, one of the more listened to podcast series on iTunes. So thank you for that. It just shows that you guys love the content that we're coming out with. You guys have been given positive reviews and leaving positive comments as well. Um, I actually wanted to mention a comment that I got last week. We were talking about the NFC East and I, um, on that video, a guy commented and said, Hassan, why do you hate school so much? So if you didn't tune in to last week's podcast, I was with uh, my co-host John and we uh, were talking about the NFC East. He's a big Eagles fan. But before we got into that, we were talking about, see, I'm trying to think, how do we get into the topic of school? But somehow, some way, school got mentioned and I just said, I hate school. And John was like, yeah, I hate school too. And he said, why do you hate school so much? Listen. Okay, so if you're here solely for the NFC West, which most of you are, all of you are actually, if you don't care about this next part, because I'm going to talk about why I hate school so much, and I'm going to go in on them, and it's going to be hilarious. But if you don't care about that, and you just care about the, the football analysis of the NFC West, skip. Skip ahead. Um, if you're on iTunes, hit that 15 second skip button until you hear about the NFC West. Or if you're on YouTube, um, just skip ahead to the NFC West part. But don't don't say I didn't warn you. So if you say just get to the point, like, yo, bro, I'm telling you to skip ahead. So let me get into school and why I hate school first, and then I'll talk about the uh, about the NFC West. So if you want to be a lawyer or a doctor or an engineer then go to school there's no other way around that however if you want to be a filmmaker or an actor or a musician or a comedian anything pretty much most everything that it requires creative talent you can get away with not going to school Trust me. I speaking for from for me. I went to school and I graduated with a four year degree. And if you don't know what I want to get into, I kind of want to get into this. I want to talk about football for the rest of my life to pretty much sum it up. So whether that be um, doing this full time, which this has actually been growing, and it's not out of the question that I might be able to do this full time, um, or you know, ten fifteen years down the road, I might get a gig with you know, a major sports network, which would be amazing. And obviously that's not something that it could happen overnight. That's something I got to work towards. Um, but yeah, pretty much just to talk about football for the rest of my life. That's what I want to do. And I went to school to get a four-year degree in that field in broadcasting. And from my experience, I learned next to nothing. Everything that I know about this field um, I learned on my own. I took uh, years of practice with, with video editing, watching YouTube videos, um, years of experience being on camera, filming myself, editing that, putting this podcast up on social media, promoting on social media, all of that. I learned on my own. Um, school, 
didn't really guide me in the right direction and helping me get a job in that field. Um, you know, it, all of it, like whether it be volunteer work, trying to find internships, reaching out to connections, um, all that was just from hard work. And and what I did get out of school was a piece of paper that said that I am qualified. If you're listening to this podcast on iTunes, I'm doing the air quotes right now. That said that I was qualified to get a job in that field. But as far as the, as far as the knowledge that comes with it, I learned all of that on my own. And you know, even what is even more amazing is that um, all the stuff that you need to know for your job, you learn at your job. All the jobs that I've had in the past, most of it, I've had to learn on the job. Um, they train you to learn all that stuff. Um, school is, man, unless you have... Or, or you're passionate about trying to pursue an intellect related field. So engineering, you know, doctor degree, what, whatever it may be, totally understand that. Like you gotta go to school. There's no other way around that. Um, but man, if, if I were to, um, and, and this, this part definitely speaks to you guys that are either graduating high school or in college right now. Actually, most of our demographic is, it's 18 through 24. So this definitely does apply to you guys. Um, so if I don't have kids yet, but if I get kids in the future, um, and they're 17, 18, about to graduate high school, I'm going to sit them down. I'm going to say, okay, what are you passionate about? And if they say things like that, where you have to go to school, you have to get a bachelor's or a master's or a doctorate degree, go to school. There's no other way. Like I said, but if they want to be a comedian or a filmmaker or an actor, I'm going to say, don't waste your time. You don't go to, you don't want to be a filmmaker and major in film. Like that's a waste of money. Don't do that. You don't want to be a musician and major in music theory. That's a waste of money. Don't do that. Instead, what I'm gonna say is, okay, don't go to school for that. Instead, what I want you to do is, I want you to go get a part-time job somewhere once you graduate high school. You know, whether that be a server at a restaurant, work at Forever 21, I don't know, just some random job, just so that you can make money and afford food. Um, go go get a part-time job, work in 20, 25 hours, and then on the side, work towards your passion. So if you wanna be a musician, you know, make music, try to find a band to join, or uh, make your own music, put it up on YouTube, put it up on, on, on iTunes, Spotify, just, just promote all that stuff. And eventually you can book gigs and just work your way up. If you want to be an actor, find extra work, um, like work as an extra until you can work your way up into a speaking role and then just go on from there. If you want to be, for some reason I'm mentioning comedian a lot. If you want to be a comedian, like do record yourself doing stand-up comedy, put it up on YouTube, use that as like a demo reel, um, try to find gigs, reach out to a, a talent agent, do something and just work your way up. Because what that does, it teaches you character, it teaches you work ethic, it teaches you um, that if I want to really be involved in my passion, I'm not going to go follow a system that doesn't have a high success rate, meaning school. Instead, I'm going to work towards everything that I want to be and it's just going to teach you great work ethic. With school, yeah, the work ethic that you get out of it, you study, but you're pretty much, all you're working hard for is to gain the knowledge so that you can pass the text, uh, pass the test for the next day. You're just getting knowledge so you can pass the test for the next day. That's it. Um, and some people do get valuable information out of school. Most of the time, you don't. I know I'm going off on this, but you know, if 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 school were a business, it would be in so much trouble with with the amount of fraud that 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 goes around it because it, it, it is fraud. Think of it like you you invest so much money, so much time into something, into a product, and you get nothing out of it. That would. If that was a business, that would get shut down immediately. Yet, school and student loan debt, it's increasing heavily. I graduated last year. I have a lot of student loan debt. Now, granted, I'm not struggling any bit. I'm actually ahead in paying them. Um, 
but it is just kind of disappointing as far as I went to school just to get that piece of paper and yeah that piece of paper is going to get me somewhere one day but as far as the actual time that I've spent in school man I'd I learned next to nothing, and and that's just my experience. Maybe you guys have a, have had a different experience, but listen, don't waste your time. And I don't want to cause a rift in your in your family. You know, if you're, you know, listen to this podcast, and then right after you go up to your mom, you say, "Mom, I I don't want to go to school anymore." Well, I why why is that? Why what what changed your mind? I I just uh I was listening to this guy on YouTube, and he he just he had some very valid points. Oh, I. What are you, you're gonna listen to this guy on the internet? He's, what? what, what? He's, yeah, like I, I know he's. I, I just don't want to go to school. They, yeah, okay, I'm not trying to cause a rift or anything like that. But if if you need to, if you want to listen to any random guy on the internet, listen to me talking about school. Okay, I'm here to help. I'm not trying to ruin any sort of lives. And man, if you have questions about it, reach out to me, whether it's Time with Football's Instagram, whether it's my personal Instagram, I'll put all of that in the video podcast, all the uh, the usernames for that. Reach out to me, man. Me- message me. Talk to me about, hey, I'm, 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 I'm about to graduate high school or I'm going into my senior year of high school and you know, I don't know if I want to go into college or I'm two years into college. Like, is this the right thing for me? Listen, from a guy that graduated college last year, I can can help you, you know, listen to to your situation, what you're going through, and I'd love to help. So seriously, reach out to me if you, if you need any sort of advice on that. And that is why I hate school. Gosh, I, yo, I'm so mad right now. I hate school so much. Back to football. So. Welcome, guys, for you guys that skipped that last part. Yeah, we talked about a lot. We talked about um, why we hate school. But the NFC West. So we're going to talk about the Seahawks, the 49ers, the Cardinals, and the Rams. The first team that we're going to talk about, the Seattle Seahawks. So breaking down this team going into 2018. Last year, they missed the playoffs, but, man, there's just a lot of a little bit of drama that went into it with the secondary with you know Richard Sherman getting hurt with Earl Thomas saying that he wanted to be a Dallas Cowboy be traded once a new contract and and not only that the, the Seahawks had no run game so Russell Wilson was a do it all man for that team um so they missed the playoffs they were 9 and 7 this year they I, they're still as talented and that team last year had the potential to go 11 and 5 they had the potential to reach at least the divisional round of the playoffs. Um, they just fell through. They didn't, they didn't deliver on finishing out the, the whole entire game, finishing out through the fourth quarter. But man, if you want to speak about why this team is so talented, it's because of number three behind center, and that's Russell Wilson. He is that entire team, and I know I brag about him all the time on this podcast, but... If he wasn't on that team last year, this whole Seahawks team, I wouldn't be surprised if they were 4 and 12 or 5 and 11 last year. He is that good. Um he's more valuable, I feel like, to his team than Aaron Rodgers is to his team. I know. Big statement. I'm not saying that Russell Wilson is better than Aaron Rodgers. Obviously Aaron Rodgers is better, but who Russell Wilson is and the kind of player that that he is on the Seahawks, like he's so important, so vital. He he. If you listen last week, John mentioned that um, Russell Wilson accounted for seventy five percent of that team's offense. That's crazy. That's insane. He scored thirty eight total touchdowns. He led the league in passing touchdowns with thirty four with that Seahawks team that had no offensive line, and then. He scored four rushing touchdowns. That was more than all the Seattle Seahawks running backs combined last year. He accounted for 38 touchdowns um, on the Seahawks last year. The Seahawks offense scored a total of 39 touchdowns. J.D. McKissick last year scored one touchdown. That was the only running back that scored an offensive touchdown. All the other offensive touchdowns, Russell Wilson. 
and I know I'm big on him. Um, and I always say like, man, if if if, if last year they were an eleven and five or twelve and four, um, Russell Wilson would have been MVP. You know, if if Carson Will- Carson Wentz was still hurt. If Carson Wentz wasn't hurt, it'd be Carson Wentz. He'd be MVP. But Russell Wilson is just valuable. Like. He led the league in passing touchdowns last year. He's valuable to his team. He accounted for most of that offense. Um, and he's going to be a big factor in why he or the Seahawks can make that push for the NFC West. I know that the Rams did get better, but honestly, if if the Seahawks, they, they brought in a lot of pieces like Rashad Penny uh, for the run game. Chris Carson, who was out um, last year with a season-ending injury, he's coming back, so he's going to help the run game out a lot. Man, but if they get if they get that run game going and they solidify that offensive line, this is a dangerous team that's gonna compete with the Rams for the NFC West title. Um, so it would be a disappointment. I feel like if the Seahawks win less than ten games, I don't see them winning. Yeah, I don't see them winning less than ten games. I, I think that it's gonna be at least ten games or more, and they're gonna be a contender for the NFC West. Um, and it's mainly because of Russell Wilson. He's a do it all man, and yeah, I just I, I love him so much. I just I just love bragging on him. Um, the LA Rams. So the Rams are a team that brought in a lot of talent. You didn't think that they could get any better, but they did. They brought in Brandon Cooks at wide receiver. They lost Sammy Watkins, but Brandon Cooks, I feel like, is an upgrade at that position. Um, their defense is so much better. Ndamukong Kong Su, Akib Talib, you, you're thinking about how do they get they they they've planned this so well. This organization they saved so much money, so much cap space over the years that they can afford it now, where they can sign Nadam Kongsu to that one year contract for fourteen million dollars. They can trade for a keep to leave and and be responsible uh, for his contract. So they brought in all these pieces together because they're like, yeah, it's Super Bowl or bust this year. You ask any other player on that team, they'll be like, yeah, we don't want that added pressure. But you think about it, that's. It's pretty much at this point because last year they won the NFC West. Um, they lost in the wild card round to the Atlanta Falcons, but they have the talent still and the pieces still to go after um, that Super Bowl run. Um, next to the Minnesota Vikings, this team has the most pressure to make it to the Super Bowl. So that'll be interesting. If the NFC Championship ends up being the LA Rams versus the Minnesota Vikings, Oh, that's going to be good because one team has or, or the amount of pressure that's on that game for both teams. That's going to be fantastic if that were the NFC championship. Um, Jared Goff is someone that really um, showed his his skills and, and really brightened up his second year um, going into his third year. When I watch him play, I see, you know, I, I see comparisons to someone like Alex Smith um, where the, the term game manager is has a negative connotation. Um, I guess you could call him that, but he does make some some pretty good plays at times that that do affect in, in, in the outcome of the game. Um, but Jared Goff, he, he's, he's a guy, I, I say he's like Alex Smith because like the Chiefs over the years did for Alex Smith um, before he left for, for Washington, they were a team that didn't ask too much of Alex Smith. It was just enough because they had so many pieces around him where they could just rely on the run game. They can rely on Todd Gurley and take a lot of pressure off of Jared Goff. And that was the same situation with, with Alex Smith where they had Jamal Charles over the years. They had people like Kareem Hunt, like Spencer Ware, where they can rely on the run game. They don't ask too much of Alex Smith. You don't have to throw 4,000 yards a year. You can throw for 3,500. You can throw for for 26 touchdowns. Make sure you just keep your interceptions to just six or seven interceptions a year, and you'll be fine because our run game is strong enough to where this team can be good if you don't turn over the ball so much. Um, And that's the same thing I, I feel like um, is is going on in Los Angeles? That's the same way that the Los Angeles offense is 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 operating, um, and that's how Sean McVay. I feel like he learned a lot from from, from Andy Reid, or just from, just from watching him. Um, not saying that he he was coach under him or anything like that, but just from watching him or, or that kind of play style. Um, that's the kind of play style that he's developing. As far as how successful they'll be, I do see them going to the playoffs again. Um, you know, I. I <laughs> 
going back to the Seahawks, I am big on the Seahawks because I feel like last year was just a down year. And um, will they win the NFC West title? I don't know. It's going to be neck and neck with the Rams and the Seahawks. But with the Seahawks getting better, um, I could see both teams teetering at 10 and 6 or 11 and 5. Um, something like that. I haven't had a chance to like really sit down and read everybody's schedule game by game and see what the record's going to be. Um, but they are talented enough to be um, an 11 win team or a 12 win team. Um, so that's that's what I feel like with the Los Angeles Rams. We're going to talk about the next two teams and the NFC West. But before we get into it, I'm going to take a moment to talk about something amazing, something incredible. And that something incredible is Patreon. Patreon is the number one way to sponsor your favorite content creator. So we've been saying this throughout the entire podcast where um, videographers, Instagram models, um, pretty much anyone that is an independent contractor that works for themselves, um, that makes content that that you love seeing, you can go to patreon.com and search their name and and sponsor them. You can pledge to them. It's kind of like a GoFundMe, but it's every single month. So um, at Time to Football, if you go to patreon.com slash time to football, you can read up on all the perks um, that you get from pledging because um, we have perks of if you donate $5 a month, you will get a free Time to Football t-shirt. Um, but if you're a Patreon for just as little as $1 a month, you get a free Time to Football wristband. Um, and there's going to be more and more perks coming out um, over time. We're going to come out with a lot more merchandise and, and, and things that you can you can win. So, um, But if, if everyone that was listening to this podcast um, or watching this podcast on YouTube just gave as little as a dollar a month, that's it. A dollar from your paycheck every single month. We would have enough money to grow time to football tremendously. Um, you can kind of read up also where your money goes towards because I know you're kind of hesitant with donating money, but um, you can see all the projects that we've got planned for the future. And trust me, these projects, there's some pretty cool ones out there. So um, that's patreon.com slash time to football. So that's P A T R E O N dot com slash time, the number two, football. Um, and you can read up on all the projects that your money um, goes towards. So patreon.com slash time to football. That's patreon.com slash time to football. Yo, these lights are burning me up. I'm sweating. I I I sweat a lot as far as um I'm I'm a guy. Now I'm getting into sweating. Um because we're actually going to talk about the Arizona Cardinals first. So it makes sense I would feel like with the desert and talking about sweat. Um I'm a guy that I sweat with temperature more than I do with physical activity. It's kind of weird, I know, but like if I get in a hot car and it's 90 degrees and I'm driving to work, I mean, my back is going to be sweaty by the time I get out of that car because my back is pressed up, up against the, up against the car seat. So like I got to make sure I got to, I got to pull up my shirt, you know, to make sure like my lower back is exposed to the car seat so that my, my work shirt doesn't get, you know, sweaty or anything like that. Back to football. The desert, the heat, sweat. Let's talk about the Cardinals. So the Arizona Cardinals, um, they're talented, I feel like. I, I I feel like I say that about every team, but they're not quite at the level of the Seahawks and the Rams. We, obviously, we know that. Um, a big hit last year was David Johnson getting hurt for the whole season. Um, there, was, there was speculation that he might come back later in the season, but they were out of playoff contention, so there's no point. Like, you know, Bro, David, just heal up your wrist. Don't worry about it. Worry about it next year. They got a new head coach, uh, Bruce Arians. Bruce Arians is gone. They got Steve Wilkes. Not to be confused with Steve Wilkos, which if you know who that is, props to you because he comes out with some, like I'll be laying in bed 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock at night just watching Steve Wilkos videos. I don't know. I guess I'm a sucker for that drama. I don't know. It's not the best show, but whatever. Uh, But Steve Wilkes. Um, he's a new head coach, and 
So, so with new head coaches, it's very rare for them to be successful right out of the bag, um, unless you come into a good situation where the team's already talented. You know, for instance, Gary Kubiak uh, a few years back when he came into uh, Denver with the Denver Broncos. So, um, Steve Wilkes, it, it might take some time to develop. They traded up and gave up uh, a couple of picks to go get Josh Rosen to be their franchise quarterback. Sam Bradford is their quarterback and their starter, I feel like, um, but a one-year, $20 million deal. When he signed that, I wasn't the biggest fan of that just because you, you don't sign someone to $20 million just to be a bridge quarterback. L- let's just say, let's say how it is. Like Sam Bradford, talented, and he does get a, f- a lot of flack for being injured a lot. Um, obviously, I don't hope that he gets injured, but... He's a talented guy, and he can win some football games for the Cardinals. But the $20 million, that's something that you would pay towards a quarterback if you know that your team is going to make the playoffs um, and has a run for the Super Bowl. Then you could spend $20 million. And maybe the Cardinals have that mentality where they think like, yeah, we're talented enough to compete for the NFC West. We can beat the Seahawks. We can beat the Rams. And honestly, I believe it. Maybe at least just once. You know, they face them twice a year. Um, If they win just one of those games, pull out an upset against the Seahawks just once, against the Rams just once, um, and they could beat the 49ers. They have the capability to beat the 49ers twice. You know, why not? Why not? They they could have a a run to be in the wild card spot, but personally, I I don't see it. Um, I still feel like this team is is one year away from making it to the playoffs. and that's not a knock on Sam Bradford. Um, I'm rooting for the guy. I hope he does start all 16 games. I think he has a better chance of starting all 16 games than Josh Rosen does of, of coming in and relief of Sam Bradford. Um, I, if Bradford does stay healthy, I don't see Rosen coming in unless the Cardinals are either out of playoff contention and they want to give Rosen a shot in the last one or two games of the season. Or if the Cardinals get a home field advantage and they already have that clinched and they want Sam Bradford to rest and they put in Josh Rosen for week 17. That's the only way I see it. But I think the biggest thing for this team is going to be David Johnson. They got to go back to what they did with um, DJ back in in, in 2016 when he had his breakout year. um, And that was rely on him a lot. He was most of that offense. He was the most of the offense in the run game, most of the offense in the pass game uh, with the exception of, of Larry Fitzgerald. Um, but DJ is going to be a good guy. He's he's underrated. Um, I'm going to go ahead and tell you right now. I I wouldn't be devastated if I drafted him first round in, in fantasy football. Honestly, I feel like he's going to have a really big year. He's going to go back to what he did in 2016. He's going to be just as talented. He's still young. Um, a lot of people are sleeping on him. But if I had like the sixth or seventh pick in fantasy football, and he dropped down. To me, I'm I'm picking him up. I think he's going to have a, a fantastic year, and he's going to be up there with Le'Veon Bell and and, and and Todd Gurley and Ezekiel Elliott as one of the best running backs this year. Um, defensively, this team is good. Patrick Peterson, talented guy. Um, last year, I think people put him took his name value into consideration more more so than his actual playing style last year. Uh, but he's still a good cornerback. And Chandler Jones is someone that's very underrated as well, leading the NFL last year with 17 sacks. So this team is talented. We'll see how they go. Um, I still don't think that they'll win the NFC West title. Are they going to make the, uh, a run for the playoffs? Ah, man, in the wild card with the NFC being so competitive, I think they're they're going to miss out. Um, not to say that they're not talented. There's just too much talent around there. There's there's too much talent with Carolina, with New Orleans, with Atlanta. So those are three teams in the same division right there. So if one one of them wins the division, the other two teams are fighting for that wild card spot, which two of those teams are talented than the Arizona Cardinals. Um, and I, I, I just don't think it's going to be their year this year. But granted, um, hopefully, you know, Bradford does stay healthy. They get the most out of their $20 million contract for him. Um, but also they can see... Um, some playing time for Josh Rosen if 
throw out a playoff contention and Rosen has to come in on, on week 16 or week 17. Um, and last, we've got the San Francisco 49ers. And the biggest news is Jimmy Garoppolo. He's the biggest thing right now in the Bay Area. Um, he's a new five-year, $130 million plus dollar contract. And it was all because of his 5-0 and record. Um, not really because of his touchdown to interception ratio, because that was seven touchdowns to five interceptions. Obviously, a lot of people can can see, you know, Jimmy G and, and his his stats that year and say, well, he does he doesn't deserve that big contract. Okay, well, if you're basing it solely off of stats, that that's it's not fair because if you saw him play, I, I had a chance of seeing a lot of um, Jimmy Garoppolo games last year, and seeing him play, this guy's the real deal. I feel like he's the real deal because he, he's still young. Um, he he can break down and, and, and slice through defenses. The most impressive game that he had last year, I was so impressed with what he did against Jacksonville. Very impressed. That's a top five defense last year. Against Jalen Ramsey, against A.J. Bouye, that secondary, that defensive line, Calais Campbell, that that's incredible what he did. Um so if he can slice up defenses just like that, a defense as talented like that, put up 44 points against a top five defense, I'm excited to see what Jimmy GQ does in 2018. Um, the run game, they brought in Jarek McKinnon. I know a lot of people are big fans on, on, of Jarek McKinnon. I am too. He went to Georgia Southern, um, which it's a local college around here in Georgia. So I, I've been watching him for, for a while. And I was a big fan of what he did in, in college and what he did in Minnesota. Um, I I don't know if that's a big bigger upgrade than Carlos Hyde. I know that Jerick McKinnon is, is is younger. I, I feel like you know fact check me on that. I'm not entirely sure. I think he is. Um, but man, Carlos Hyde is is one of those guys. He could be a three down back. I don't feel like Jerick McKinnon could be that. Um, now granted, Matt Breida. Wow. Okay. Um, Matt Breida and Jerick McKinnon went to Georgia Southern. So I I just realized that. That's pretty cool. So Matt Breida and Jerick McKinnon, two running backs in San Francisco, find out that they're, they went to Georgia Southern, find out they're going to be on the same team together. Uh, Breida does have a lot of potential. McKinnon has a lot of potential as well. Um, but I think Carlos Hyde is, is better than than both of those running backs. Um, hopefully I get proven wrong because I, obviously I, I root for the success of, of a lot of these running backs so or a lot of these NFL players. So, Hopefully, I do, I do get proven wrong. Um, but it also, one other key piece on why the 49ers could be successful, um, Solomon Thomas. So Solomon Thomas was a guy that was drafted uh, number three overall by the San Francisco 49ers. And he was a guy that the 49ers were going to get, whether they were at number two, number three. Um, he was drafted number, uh, number three in 2017. Last year, he was. And... I, I watched a uh, game tape on him, and there's one particular video that I saw. Um, Brett Collerman, if you guys know who he is, um, he's, he's a guy that breaks down the, the NFL game footage up on YouTube. If you don't know, oh, fantastic watch. Go go look him up. Brett Collerman, he, he, what he does is he takes, um, I think he has NFL game pass, and he has different angles of um, the formations during NFL games and he can like really break down like player strengths, players weaknesses and um, it's really cool stuff. Go check him out. Uh, but anyways, he made a video talking about Solomon Thomas, talking about this defensive end, this pass rusher. Um, he's a big guy and and pretty much the, the, the title of that uh, or the, the main point of that video was Solomon Thomas could be a force to be reckoned with in the next year or two. Um, just the way his he's athletically built, his power, his speed, just like the perfect size. He, he you know, he he could be the next um, Joey Bosa, uh, JJ Watt, like those pass rushers on the edge um, that are just strong, physical, and and just can get in your face and swat down a ball. Um, so I'm really excited to see Solomon Thomas. I think he's gonna have a. If I had to make a prediction, I think he's gonna get over 10 sacks this year. Um, so that defense is going to be good because of, of that one piece, at least their defensive line is. Um, so I, I do love the 49ers. Um, if I had to 
rank them and where they're going to be in the NFC West. Hmm. They're going to be competing with the Arizona Cardinals for that third spot. Um, I think if, if, if I had to choose between the Cardinals and the 49ers, I'm going to give the slight edge to the Cardinals just because of David Johnson and Larry Fitzgerald, who's an ageless wonder. Um, 49ers are still young. And granted, the Rams are young as well, but the Rams have already proven that they've got the talent, they've got what it takes to be in that big spot, to be um, in the playoffs, so they can make it there again. For the 49ers, um, this is Kyle Shanahan's second year, and the last time Kyle Shanahan was with the team in his second year, they went to the Super Bowl when he was at the Atlanta Falcons. Um, so let's see if, if, if Kyle Shanahan and his amazing and, and, and talented offense um, offensive schemes uh, will be a good fit for Jimmy GQ and, and, and his running game. But I, I feel like they're going to be fourth behind the Arizona Cardinals, Arizona Cardinals, but it's not going to be that big of a margin. Um, so if I had to rank them and if I had to say who was going to win the division title, and again, this could change. This could this could change because I haven't like sat down and looked at each game or each schedule game by game. Um, but I'm going to say the 49ers finished fourth in the NFC West. The Cardinals are third. The Seahawks are second and the Rams are first. But it's not going to be that big of a margin. Like how the 49ers and the Cardinals, it's not going to be that big of a margin with the third and fourth spot. With the NFC West title and the first and second spot, it's not going to be that big of a margin. So I wouldn't be surprised if the Seahawks win uh, the NFC West. But we'll find out. Um, it's one of the more interesting divisions in football for sure. But that wraps up the NFC. Um, so thank you guys so much for tuning in to the uh, NFC West podcast and for the past podcast as well. Next up, we're going to be talking about the AFC. So the next up, uh, next podcast that we got talking about, uh, the, if I can talk, the next podcast that we've got coming up, we're going to be talking about the AFC South. So the Colts, the Jaguars, the Titans, And the Texans. Um, That'll be a fun one as well. But we're going to get into the AFC. And I appreciate you guys tuning in every single week. Uh, Make sure you guys, if you're listening to this podcast on iTunes, we do have a video podcast up on YouTube if you'd like to see me sweat. Um, And while I talk about this, uh, talk about football, then go ahead. I don't know. That might be your thing, which I'm not one to judge. Um, then go ahead and, and look up, look us up on YouTube. But if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you go to iTunes, subscribe to that podcast. But not only that, rate and review. Give us five stars and write an awesome, amazing, positive, happy review. No negativity because we, we've we been getting that a lot as well. So um, leave us a review and, and let us know if you guys like this, if you want to see something else. Um, and also follow us on all the social media sites. Pretty much anything. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. Search Time to Football. That's Time, the number two, football. All one word. Search that anywhere and you will find us. Um, Thank you guys so much for, for tuning in. And yo, if you hate school, I'm with you. It's okay. I'm with you as well. Reach out to me if you hate school. I want to share that passion with you. The passion to hate school.